David, you muted yourself. Of course I did. All right. So <laughs> uh, where we left off, we had just finished full crud on our uh, movies resource. I kind of want you to notice how we're speeding up through this process. Uh, like we kind of did full crud on movies uh, spread across like what two, really one full day. Um, so whereas in like to do's, we did that across just two days. So you're going to kind of notice that as we move through the rest of this process, we're going to kind of move through things a little bit faster. We're going to, you know, kind of be hitting these same ideas and concepts up, but we're not going to have to like talk about them in depth. So we're going to be able to kind of implement features a little bit faster than uh, we were doing before. And that is also going to be true of our new embedded data that we are going to be adding into this application next. So if you swing over to our Mongoose embedding lecture, what you're going to find is that we are going to be talking about um, we're going to be talking about our schemas for embedding sub documents inside of existing documents and then how to actually embed that inside of its main, uh, its kind of parent document that's going to hold it. So that is what you're going to be able to do after the end of this lecture. Uh, you're going to continue using our existing project, Mongoose Movies. I have just pushed, uh, so you should have access to that now. And let's go ahead and jump in. So let's talk about embedding and why we might want it. So first off, there's two different ways that we're able to model related data using MongoDB. The first one is going to be embedding. That's the one we're going to talk about today. And that is where the parent document holds its sub documents. Now, what that means is that whenever we go into Azure over here, let me go ahead and bring over my connection string. So whenever we go into our Azure extension, and I bring in our database. When I go into a parent document, that's to do, where's movies right there. Cool. So what if I go into a parent document, which are going to be our movies, what you're going to find in here is that we're going to have an array of reviews. And that array of reviews is going to be an array of objects. Remember to uh, remember back to whenever I was talking about the different things that we're able to put inside of a mongoose model. We are able to do strings, numbers, booleans, dates, arrays, and then we get these other things for mongoose. And I alluded to this fact that we were leaving out objects. Put simply, an embedded, uh, an embedded piece of data is an object. That is how we are going to put objects into our different, uh, into our different schemas. That's also how we're going to be able to do kind of like an array of objects, for example. So each one of these objects is technically going to be a sub document. It is its own MongoDB document. It's going to have an object ID, just like our parent documents have. But it's going to be constructed in a very, very similar way as a regular old data source. 
a regular old piece of uh, data, a regular old document. So let's go ahead and kind of dive into this. So that's embedding. Embedding is also going to be a little bit more efficient than our second type of uh, our second type of way that we can model this data, which would be referencing. It's a little bit more efficient because what we have is all of the data inside of the object. It's inside of the existing document itself. Everything is just already here. Whenever I query for this parent document, it automatically comes with its sub documents right out of the box. I don't have to do any additional work. That is going to be in opposition to referencing. And how that looks is whenever a document just contains the related document's object ID. So instead of holding all of the data inside of a parent document, all we're going to have whenever we're referencing is just kind of this thing that points to an existing document that lives somewhere else. So we have embedding, which we're talking about more today, referencing, which we'll talk about more tomorrow. So you can kind of see an example of this here. This is going to be for a fake people collection. And all of our people are going to have contacts. And you'll see that how this looks is that this data is embedded right inside of this parent document. The data lives right there. Just a point of note, if you're used to working in a relational SQL database, this information would require a separate table. In MongoDB, it does not. Again, if you're not already kind of cognizant of SQL, that information is not going to do anything for you. But if you're kind of using SQL as a frame of reference to bring here, that is kind of how this uh, would look if we were doing this in a uh, SQL DB. All right. Uh, ba, 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 ba. All right. So what we're going to be implementing here is this idea that a movie is going to have reviews attached to it. Oh, look at that. This is the last thing I looked at. So a movie is going to have this array of reviews right here. We can see here that this is going to be an embedded resource. You can see our existing movie schema over here on the left and our existing review schema or the review schema we will write rather over here on the right side. Ignore performer for now. We'll get to that later. And what we have here is a one-to-many relationship. We've kind of talked about this before a little bit. We're going to actually dive into that here. What does that one-to-many relationship mean? Well, it is that a review is going to be attached to a movie. A review belongs to a movie. And only one movie. If I'm writing a review for Star Wars, that review only applies to the movie Star Wars. However, a movie can have many reviews attached to it. I can write a review for Star Wars. Ben could write a review for Star Wars. Hunter could write a review for Star Wars. Joe could write a review for Star Wars. And Ian could write a review for Star Wars. Everyone in this room could write a review for Star Wars. So 
those reviews belong to that singular movie, Star Wars. But there are many of them. Again, that is the relationship that we are going to be building today, where a movie can have many reviews. All right. So, how are we going to go about implementing this relationship? In a SQL database, again, if that's kind of the experience that you're bringing to the table here, there's not much flexibility in how you're going to be doing this, right? You're creating another table and you're joining these two tables together. And that would have, get you access to both a movie and a review. But in a NoSQL document-based database, this isn't necessarily going to be as straightforward. And you're going to have some decisions to make as you're going about this. The reason why you would choose to embed something over referencing something is because I only care about a review in the context of a movie. I'm going to say that again because this is super, super important. The reason why we are embedding reviews inside of movies in this context is because I only care about reviews whenever I am looking at a movie. I'm not going to have a place in this application where I have the ability to like look at a bunch of reviews. All of my functionality is going to be whenever I am looking at a specific movie, I can see the reviews attached to that movie. So we're embedding the reviews inside of the movie. That is why that decision has been made in this application. Again, we'll kind of see a different uh, variation on this, why we're referencing tomorrow with performers. But we embed whenever I only care about reviews in the context of a movie. Ryan, you got a question? Yeah, so if that weren't the case, like I, I guess maybe if it were... Uh like a like a letterboxed situation or whatever like it's a site yeah, yeah. for movie reviews would you then have to make a like another model and another controller for uh reviews in that case then correct yes yeah so that would be where you would bring in referencing say like you go to uh i'm not going to go there but say you go to letterbox and they have that like they have their home page that's just got reviews splattered across the top of it, right? Uh, and those reviews are kind of outside of the context of the movie. You're not viewing a particular movie in that case. You're just seeing all of the, here's some recent reviews for all the movies in our database, right? And in that case, you would want to do something like referencing. It would make more sense to do that because we care about reviews outside of the context specifically of a movie. Okay. Cool. So again, your decision here on whether you should embed or reference is really going to be dependent upon the functionality of your application. And it can get really nuanced. Again, as part of your project submissions that you're going to be doing this week, you're going to be making these decisions. And you're probably, more than likely, I would say, probably half of you are going to make the wrong decisions whenever you submit this ERD to us that you have to make here. And we're going to kind of talk to you about your data and steer you on the right happy path you want to be on to be able to implement the functionality that you want in your apps. So we're, you know, going to kind of help you through that process. Don't get too like scared of, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to do this myself. Uh, we're not going to let you make crazy wild mistakes going in. Uh, but your decisions here are important and will kind of inform the functionality of your application. It's really, really important to be thinking about your application and its features as you're designing out how you want your data to be laid out in the CRD. Cool. 
So any questions about this? I know that's a bit, and I know like there's a little bit of kind of fog around it and a little bit of, you know, like, what do you do? Well, it depends, but uh, that is something you're kind of going to have to get a feel for as you build out these applications. We're going to give you some, you know, good reference pieces so that you can kind of make some informed decisions along the way. But, you know, ultimately, um, you know, this is going to be a large part of your unit projects that you end up doing. Patrick, question. Yeah, David, um, in your review box, uh, there's no field for to identify the movie, the parent movie, right? Are we saying that the review item doesn't know who its parent is? The review itself will not, but because it is embedded directly inside of a movie, we are never separating these two from one another. So for example, if we come back up to our people collection, these contacts are embedded resource here is going to live inside of our person who is holding on to these contacts. So we always have this reference back to who are these the contacts of? Oh, they're the contacts of Joe Smith. Same thing with your reviews. You'll always have the context here that, oh, these are inside of this movie whenever we actually have that data uh, available to us. And I'll point that out whenever we get there too. Good question though. All right. So. What we're going to do now is go ahead and implement our embedding here. And to do this, we go back to our model. Now, these are all going to be part of our existing movie schema here. We're going to add in our reviews on top of this. I'll show you how we do that. In this file, what we're going to do is create another schema. So we're going to have const review schema equals new schema. Uh, just to point this out, it is important that this review schema comes before our movie schema. We're going to need to reference this movie schema inside of the movie schema. So we need to define this up here. All right. So our content for this is going to be a string. We're just going to let the user enter whatever they want here. That's going to be our review content. We're also going to ask the user to provide a rating from one to five. So that is going to be a rating. This is going to be of type number with a minimum of one, a maximum of five, and a default of five. And as I'm sure Ben mentioned, we're going to have timestamps true on this as well. Because we're always just going to throw this into all of our models by default. So that we have access to those timestamps, not time series. I was just about to push that. <laughs> all right. So here's our review schema. Now, how do we actually make use of this? With this defined, what we're going to do is add this into our movie schema. So our reviews array is going to be an array of review schema. Now, someone tell me why this is going to be an array of review schema here. Because it's going to take 
each of the like models that match the re schema and put it into an array so you see multiple of them. Okay, cool. I that I was looking for that bit at the end. We're going to have multiple reviews attached to a movie. So we have a data structure that already works for that. We have an array. So we're going to have an array of review schema. And that review schema will be structured just like it is here. Now, note what is happening here. This model file only exports a single model. That's why we've named it singularly. There is a single thing that comes from this file, and that is the movie model. That is all that is getting exported here. We do not compile this review schema into a separate model. We have a single model, or rather, we have a single model that is getting compiled and exported from the single movie model file. All right. So, we have our review schema that is being used here in our array. We're putting that on reviews. Any questions about what we've done here in this file? Again, big takeaway, we are keeping this model file name singularly. And we're still only exporting a single model from this, even though we have two schemas held in this file. All right. So. Now we're ready to implement this user story into this application. As a user, I want to add a review for a movie that includes a rating. And for that, we're going to make use of our five-step process. Our first step here is going to be for us to determine the proper route. And again, I want to be able to create a review. Where we're going to be doing this is actually on the movie show page. So on our movie show page, we are going to display this form. So you'll note that this is going to be different than when we did something like adding a movie, where our first step was going to a slash movies slash new route. So here we had a form on this page where the user is able to add a movie. In this case, where we're going to implement this, is on this movie show page, the movie detail page. We're going to have our reviews right down here in a section on the bottom, and we're going to have a display a form that allows the user to add a review here all at the same time. So 
So we're not going to shuttle the user off to a new page to implement this functionality. We're going to do it on an existing page. So therefore, what this means, big takeaway, we are skipping this step. We do not need a view for the form. We're attaching this to a page that already exists. So we will not have a new page for this. It's just going to exist right here on the movie show page. So therefore, all we need is our actual, the user has submitted the form and they want to create data location. But we already have one of these for our movies, right? So we're not going to be able to use this route. Well, that's, that's not great. How do we handle this? We have a new resource that's, tied to this movies resource that we want to create a resource on. Therefore, we go to our second part of this chart. We've kind of kept from you until now. And these are going to be routing for related resources. These are for one-to-many and many-to-many -many relationships. Now, you'll note here that we have some very similar routes that we've kind of seen before. For example, we've got slash blogs. Slash blogs, slash blogs, slash blogs, slash blogs. But you'll see now that what we're doing is referencing a second resource here that are tied to blogs. We use these comments and subscribers for the resources here. In this case, a comment is going to be like a review. So, what we have are going to be our different items related to blogs, comments, but instead we're going to have movies, reviews. And what we want to do, the only post action that we have here for a one-to-many relationship, that is what we've created, is we're going to create a, uh, create a review for a movie. That is going to be on slash movies. And then the ID of the movie that we want to create this review for slash reviews. That's all we're doing as part of this. Creating a comment for, sorry, creating a review for a movie. All right. So, Let's go ahead. We've determined our route slash movies slash ID slash reviews. And that's going to be a post request. So let's go ahead and on our movie show page, We're going to add a new section for reviews. So 
So right after we closed our form section up above, we're going to have a reviews down below. This is just going to all be held inside of a form. And our action here, as I just said, is going to be slash movies, and then the ID of that movie. Movie dot underscore ID slash reviews. The method here is going to be post. Uh, let me just throw this ID in here. Don't think it matters a ton, but why not? Add review form. Beautiful. All right, let me get my label set up and my inputs. So I'm going to have a label. This is going to be for my content text area. This is going to say review. And then we're going to have a text area. The name here is going to be content. Someone tell me why. That's what you called it in the schema. Yes, 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 yes. Over here, back in my model file, my review schema has content and ratings. So my name on this uh, form field needs to be content. So ID is content text area. I'm going to go ahead and remove our rows and columns from this. Beautiful. All right. Now, also going to have another label. And this will be for my label dropdown or my rating dropdown, I should say. All right, there's my label and then my select. The name here is rating. The ID is rating select. Oops, if you spell things right. And inside of this, I'm going to have five different options. So I'm going to do option star five. That's going to give me five different options. And I'm going to move down through this, put in my different options. I'm going to be generous to our movies. And I'm going to say that right off the bat, we're going to say that all of our movies are five star. There's my select. From here, I'm going to add a button. It's going to be of type submit so that we can submit this form. And I will say add review. All right. So what we're going to see now, we'll do a quick refresh. Look at that. We got a form. It looks beautiful. This is where our user will make reviews. All right. Now, I've constructed the UI that's going to submit this request to add a review. Now, what I need to do is actually create the route for it. And now we have a little bit of a dilemma. Where do I create this route? Well, we already have a movies router. We already have movies controllers, all of that. 
And this resource is embedded inside of this existing model that we have. And this lives on the movie's route. Remember, back over here in our show.ejs, this lives in slash movies. So even though this is kind of a new resource that we've added in here, reviews, we're still going to be making use of our movies router. And we're still going to be adding functionality to our movies controller. So inside of here, I'm going to add a new line for post. This will be post slash movies, the ID of the movie, and then reviews. So this is going to be router.post. And our route here is pretty clear, colon ID slash reviews. And then what we're going to have is the ability to have a little bit of independence and fun. You'll see here, back in the chart, there's nothing in here that really says, hey, you should name your controller function this. Like we have over here in our controller action. We don't really have a basis to go off of, but that's really just because this kind of controller action that we had up here makes a lot of sense to carry over into this. So here, what I'm going to call this is create review. Again, you get a little bit of latitude with this because you will potentially run into situations where, uh, you know, you need to have a little bit of flexibility with your naming. In this case, though, it makes sense to call this create review. That is exactly what we're doing. So use our typical controller actions that we've kind of already defined up here as a base. And if you need to be more flexible than your typical controller actions, feel free to be a little bit more flexible on this bottom part of this chart. This is where you get to have a little bit more fun and be a little bit more independent. But here, what we're going to do, since we're looking for a create controller or create a review function, I'm going to go ahead and do that here. We say rec res. And of course, I'm going to start out with my console log. I'm going to say rec.params.id, and that is going to be my movie ID. Remember, back over here in my route, this is the ID of a movie because that's what I passed in my show.ejs page, a movie.underscore ID. So in my controller, I'm going to call this the movie ID. And why not also look at rec.body? All righty. Let me export this. And you'll see if I pull up my terminal, I am error free. 
I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to give this a review. And we will see what happens. This worked. I think my terminal's freaking out. Hold on a moment. Uh, Refresh, reset the data, beautiful. So here we see first our movie ID. Again, we need this movie ID because we need to know what to associate this review with. Where do we want this movie to be, or where do we want this review to be created? Inside the model? Inside this existing movie. So you'll see right here, this movie ID corresponds with the movie Star Wars. This is where we want to create the new movie. And then here, on our rec.body, you'll see that our object here matches exactly what we defined over in our review schema. Content, we have rating. This is a string. And this, while it is a string here, will be coerced into a number. All right. So now what we get to do is actually write out our function for this. And how are we going to do that? We have access to, in our controller function for this, the movie ID. That's right here. So I can make use of this movie find by id rec.params.id and now i have a movie that i could do something with cool i have a movie here now you'll remember we want this to be an array, right? Or array of reviews. So we have access to array methods on this. Like push. And that is how we're going to add a new movie to our reviews. With movie.reviews.push and then we can add rec.body. What that's going to do is create a new subdocument inside of this movie document. Mongoose is going to check that what we're putting in rec.body here matches what we have provided in our review schema we've built up here. And it's going to give this new sub document an object ID and all the things that uh, would do, like add timestamps, everything that we would do for our main document also happens to a sub document. So we've added our review to the movie reviews. But I need to actually tell MongoDB about this. Right now, this is only happening locally. It's happening on this document, this movie document. So in Mongoose, we have access to, on a document, the save method. 
So I've got a movie document here and I have the save method that I'm able to use on it. That will actually push this up to MongoDB. It's going to have any changes that we made to this movie are going to be saved. So I'm going to call movie.save. Then after I've saved this movie, I'm going to redirect back to the movie show page. So I see the review that I just added. Uh, I do need a dot catch on this just in case. Add that to the lecture too. Beautiful. This is our first time where we've had a dot then inside of an existing dot then. Whenever we have this, we also need a dot catch inside of here as well. This catch will catch errors triggered by this dot then. This catch is going to catch errors caused by this dot then. Anything that happened in this process. So we have both of them here. Whenever you have nested dot thens, this is how this is going to look like. Eventually, we'll show you a way out of this so that you don't have a bunch of dot catches and dot thins and all of that. But for now, this is where we're going to live. All right. Let's test it. Let's see if our code worked, shall we? I'm going to come back here, add this review. And it looks like things went well. Of course, I'm not showing them on my page right now, but I can look at my database and I can see what this looks like. If I pull up movie, I might have to refresh in Atlas, but you can see here, look at that. Our movies, our movie document has inside of it reviews. And I have one review here. You'll see I have content, I have rating. It created an object ID for me for the specific review. I've created uh, updated at uh, as specified in my schema. Any questions about that? Yes, Ryan. So I'm getting a 404, but I don't understand why. I believe I should have everything in there okay. properly. Cool. I love it. Let's see it. No slash before the redirect. Wait. Yup. Where am I? What? Uh, on line. Who said that? That was very good. That was Nate. It sounded like. Yep. Good job, Nate. Uh, on line one hundred six before movies at the very start of your redirect. There. Uh, is that thrown up somewhere in here, or is that something you just noticed immediately? That is something that I think Nate just noticed immediately, because it's not the root of this error. I had a guess. When you're <laughs> talking about and what we're doing. Still still a good catch because that is going to matter later on. Um, let's see. So could I see your routes for your movie router? 
uh, slash ID slash reviews. That looks just fine. Is it a post though? It should be a post. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Oh my God. Oh, yep. There you go. Good catch. Beautiful. All right. There you Thank go. Thank you. Good eyes, everyone. Uh, Rachel. Hi. Yeah. So I went into my Azure and I only have like information for two movies and they're two movies that have been deleted. Like mm -hmm. I don't have any of the information. I'm going to like try to share my screen. Hold on. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't have the reviews or anything. Okay. Did you happen to refresh? I could show you how to do that once you share. But uh, so up here, if you hover over on this side, you'll see up top, there's a ah, refresh button. That might and help. It looks like you have a refreshed section here. And then there is, we still don't have a review though. I was also having the same issue without the, like, where I was getting the not found as well, but mine. Ah, okay, cool. So this is a post to slash movies, and then we've got an ID here. Um, it looks like you may have left something out of the UI because your UI is issuing this request right here to slash movies and then an ID, but it doesn't have slash reviews at the end of it. Okay. So your EJS is taking you here, your UI. So let's go look at that. Uh, that was on, yep, show page, correct. Okay. And we can see on our form, in our action, that that is indeed the case. Ah. You need to be going to slash movies, the ID of the movie, and then slash review. Um, so uh, hold on one sec. So your ID was good there. You oh. just need to add slash reviews at the end. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yep. Review for reviews. It is reviews. Okay. I hope that works. I believe it will. Also, does it matter that this styling isn't the same as what you had? No, nah, it's okay. Right. Okay, there we go. Cool. Thank you. Good work. Uh, All would right. You do a push real quick. Yes, I absolutely can. Thank you. Um, let me go ahead, share my screen. And I will do that. All right. All right. So, um, what we're going to do now is now that we have movies in our database, how about we show them to our user? Um, let me I believe this will like take, yeah, yeah, let's just come back in. Uh, let's take a 10 minute break and then we'll go and kind of wrap this up. All right. So where we left off, we were successfully creating reviews and we could see over in Azure that our reviews were be, being added into our reviews array. Let's just create another one real quick for fun. Um, and this, 
Let's add this review. I'm gonna do another refresh over here. And you can see I now have two reviews inside of the reviews array. So I've got these two sub documents here. All right, so with this, let's go ahead and display this on my actual page. I'm going to swing back over into the lecture. Come on. Uh, da, 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 da. Nope, not what I wanted. I'll give some betting. There we go. All right. So now what I want is on my show.ejs. Be adding in after this form. I'm going to look on remove our movie reviews and see if there's anything there. So I'm going to do some EJS. I'm going to say if movie dot reviews dot length. I open curly here. And let's go ahead, write in a else, because we're going to have some branching here. So there's my EJS else. And then finally, my EJS, where I'm going to close my curly. So I've got my if else branching set up. I'm going to go ahead and just handle this case if I don't have any reviews. I'm going to say that I'm going to display text that says no reviews yet. And I should be able to just test this functionality out now. Let me go do that real quick. Let's add this. And you'll see on Star Wars, this movie has reviews. So I'm not seeing the no reviews yet text. But if I swing over to a movie that doesn't have reviews, you'll see the no reviews yet text. Cool. So this is working. And now I know that inside of my if, I can go ahead and write what will happen if I have movie reviews. So let me go ahead and swing back to Star Wars. And in here, I'm going to go ahead and make a table. Um, I'm not going to go through writing out the head for this. Hello. Perfect. I'm going to send this in Slack too. So here. There's your table header. All right, go ahead and close this body tag. Beautiful. All right, so now you can see here that I'm going to display the date, the review itself, and also the rating that was given as part of this table. So to do that, I'm going to need to iterate over all of the reviews tied to a movie. So I'm going to do EJS each. I'm going to say movie reviews. And for each review, I'm going to print out a new row. And again, on every single row, I'm going to have three pieces of data, TD type th times three, with some EJS out.
first item that I need is the date. So review, and then I'm going to look at created at and to locale date string. So we'll just show the date. Cool. Another piece of data. Uh, that's going to be the actual content of a review. And then I have the actual cell or my actual uh, rating rather. That's going to be review.rating. All right. Those are the three pieces of information I'm going to have on each row. Now, if I swing back to Star Wars, refresh, uh, I need to locale, not to local. Another quick refresh. Beautiful. I have the date, the review itself, and the rating for that review. Any questions about this? Yes, Lily. Hi. Um, what is the created at called? Is that like a? That is coming from our timestamps that we added in here. Uh, so this, whenever we have a review, what we're going to get is both this created at and updated at. And we get that just for free because we included that in our review schema. Okay, thank you. If we didn't have that timestamps uh, true, we would not have this here at all. Good question. Uh, any other questions? Very good. All right, so um, there is, if you're going to be working with embedded data, there is a really good uh, bit in this level up uh, that you might want to review. This will be especially useful potentially during project week if you have embedded data there. We don't dive into any of this as part of the lecture, but this is what we see here. All right, so um, uh, another last note before we move off of this. Um, you'll notice here that we have a, eh, we'll save that for tomorrow, actually. We're good. Cool. All right, so review questions. I've got three of them. And I bet I can find three of you with a student picker. All right, so I have three questions. First one is just true or false. Must all schemas be compiled into a model? The second question is, is it more efficient to embed or reference related data? And we also have another true or false. An embedded subdocument must have its save method called for it to be persisted to the database. That's a little bit of a curveball question. But uh, we will go ahead and start from there. These are basically all true or false questions practically. So hold on one second. My dog is freaking out. Okay, cool. Uh, so uh, first question, true or false? All schemas must be compiled into a model. George is not here. Damien. Um, false. That is correct. Uh, so you'll remember back in our model file for this, the only item in here that we're compiling into a model is our actual movie schema. Our review schema rolls up into this review or this movie schema. You'll see it is right here. But the only thing that's exported from here is our single movie, 
which is why this file is named singularly. Great work, Damien. All right, so next up, is it more efficient to embed or reference related data? Andrew. Are you thinking, Andrew? Maybe, maybe. Possibly. Are you there, Andrew? Can you hear me? Oh, sorry. I am here. You're cool. You're cool. You're up. Um, it is more efficient to reference related data. It is more efficient to embed. So we kind of talked about this at the very beginning of this lecture. Um, our embedding is going to be more efficient because we do not have to make any extra queries for this data. It exists right in this reviews array. So we don't have to make any additional queries for this. It just comes out of the box with all of this data here. You'll see whenever we do referencing tomorrow, we're going to have to make additional queries to actually find the data. Uh, Nate, your question. Isn't it just more efficient in this use case, like in a case where embedded data would work well, it's more efficient, but like in the performer, in the performers or actors example, it wouldn't necessarily mm -hmm. be more efficient if we wanted to show like a. So what are, I, I get where you're getting at, but what we're, what the question is asking more specifically is, is it more, um, do we get more performance essentially out of having all of this data embedded or referenced? Uh, so not necessarily like, is this the best use case for this, which in this case it obviously is. And whenever we get to referencing tomorrow, we'll be there too. But technically, this is going to be more technically efficient if we embed the reviews in this rather than reference, because we're not having to make any additional queries for them, for the reviews. Again, we'll kind of see this actually play out tomorrow whenever we talk about um, referencing. Good question. All right, last question. Again, this is kind of a curveball, but true or false, an embedded sub document must have its save method called for it to be persisted to the database. And our lucky contestant is going to be Jesse. False. Ah, that is correct. Can you tell me why? Uh, Cause you said it was a curveball, and I thought it was true. <laughs> I love it. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. I love the reasoning. So here, why is this actually false? And that is because here in this controller, you can see that we're not calling save on a sub document. We're calling it on the parent document. You do have to call save, but it happens on the parent document, not the child. So here we're calling movie.save because movie is the parent, not the embedded sub document. Either way, I love your reasoning. Good job. <laughs> All right. So that is going to wrap us up from this lecture. Are there any questions before we move on? Uh, could could uh, you push real quick, please? I would love to. Yes. Thank you very much. All right. Very good. Uh, Patrick, question. Uh, yeah, while we're on that subject of the saving, when we were on that, like before you typed your, your function on movie, I thought it was going to be find by ID and update. Ah, okay, cool. Why, yes. why does that not work at all? I like that. Cool. So find by ID and update, right, is going to take whatever we pass in to, let's just say we were going to write this here. So let's say we did movie find by ID and update. So what, what do we need here? Well, we need rec.params.id because that's the thing that we want to update 
But our problem with find by ID and update comes at this next part. What do we want to update on our movie? Or what do we want to actually change, right? A review. So what we would need to do, I'm even struggling on how to approach this, but if we wanted to do find by ID and update first, we need a movie document. So we need a movie document. We need something that's structured like at least somewhat similarly to this right here. We need to have some data structure that looks like this. So how would we get a data structure that looks like this out of rec.params or our uh, rec.body rather? Well, we know that we have the review being submitted here, but something I don't have are all of the other reviews that exist on a movie. So let's say, for example, and this is like purely hypothetical and I don't want to like super confuse anybody. Uh, if, you know, if you're kind of following so far, you can take a step back and like don't absorb this because this is not what you'll be doing. But we need some kind of movie document, right? And all we have here on rec.body is the, is the new review. That's all that I have access to at this point. So what I would need to do for this to even begin to work is at least have access to all of the existing reviews at the very least. Because say I come in here and do um, rec.body.reviews is equal to rec body. I won't even do this on this. We'll just call reviews rec body. Um, actually, no. Reviews is going to be an empty array. I need something to put in here, right? So that's going to be, I'm going to push in rec body. Again, this is purely hypothetical, would not actually work, but let's just go with this. You would have stomped so, all the existing reviews. You would stomp out all the existing reviews. Exactly. Whenever we pass this into find by ID, well, hello, find by ID and update and pass in our reviews. Now, the thing that I'm updating our movie with is this array that has a single review in it. Not what we want to do. We need to find that movie first, add our review to the existing reviews array, and then just save it. Good question. I love your like, we have this thing. Why aren't we using it that we've already learned about? Good job. Uh, Chris. Um, I reset and used all your code and I still have an error. Oh, how fun. Let me see your screen. Sure. I'm curious, after you got my code, did you refresh your browser? I did. Oh, okay. wait a second. Hold on. Uh, so go back to perfect. Perfect. Here. Yeah, it's weird. Ah, okay. Um, I'm guessing that before you can see your database in Azure. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing, um, let's see a movie that has a review on it. Ah, ha, ha. Okay, cool. So this existing movie, I'm guessing before you pulled my code. Um, this existing review here doesn't have a created at or updated at field. 
So oh. whenever you save this, you didn't have the timestamps option on in the schema. Got it. Okay. So I'll just so, it and then make some Yeah, more. yeah. So you could just review or you can discard this document. You can delete it um, and it should be good. Um, this is a good lesson in just because we have the right code doesn't mean that that's right. that the code that's in our database actually conforms to that code. So okay. uh, yeah, you can delete any existing movie document that has reviews that do not have those created at properties on okay cool thank you yeah great question cool all right any other questions love it fantastic work everybody um what we're going to do now is you should be able to Go into uh, Notion right now. We've got a few things for you to do this evening. We're pretty much done with lecture for today. Um, you're not going to continue on from here. Where is today? There we go. All right. So first things first. Y'all are going to take a quick little quiz. Uh, and this is just going to be a quiz over RESTful routing. Uh, and so this quiz basically just kind of follows the chart that we've been discussing for uh, the last uh, four or five days now. So this will be a quiz over that. Again, this does not count towards your standing in the course purely for your benefit, is only counted as a lab deliverable. After you have um, done this, please swing over into Clippy and make sure that you have submitted that you have done this quiz. All right, so that's the first thing that I have for you all. The next thing is going to be your Mongoose Flights Lab. You can now complete part two of this lab. So go ahead, swing in there. You can do this. Um, this just follows pretty much kind of what we did in our uh, Mongoose embedding lecture today. So you can pretty closely follow or use this as a reference. Not necessarily going to be exact. There will be a few uh, differences here, but for the most part, that is what this uh, is going to be doing for you. All right. Next up after that, I have something that I'm going to throw on the calendar that I want you all to do uh, before class tomorrow, since we've got so much time at the end of our day here. Uh, and I will, again, link over to this in the calendar here in a moment. But I would like everyone to check out the Google OAuth with Express and Passport lecture. And what I would like everyone to do here is simply complete step one, where we're going to register our app. You'll see that that is one of many parts of our auth lecture that we're going to start in on tomorrow. And this step is essentially go to this page on Google's website and follow all of the steps that are shown in screenshots here. Just went through this this afternoon. All of these screenshots should be super good to go. Um, and you all should have no problem uh, being able to follow this. You're only doing step one, only step one. You should come to this part where you have a client ID and a client secret provided to you by Google. You're going to copy both of those and keep them in a safe place. And then you're done. Um. Do not continue on past that, please, 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 please. Also, do not look at the stuff before that either. I only want you all doing step one. 
this is purely the like mechanical part of this where we have to go and interact with Google to get what we need. It takes forever. So uh, set aside a good probably 30 or so minutes for this. Uh, if you run into issues along the way, reach out in your instructor chat, please. Um, again, I'll get this on the calendar so you all have a good reminder to actually do this as well. Uh, Nate, you had a question. Are we going to be submitting anything with it or taking screenshots? Or no, just... you will not be submitting anything. Um, all I need you to do is whenever you get down to the end here where you're given the client ID and the client secret, just put that somewhere safe because we're going to be using it tomorrow. But you don't need to send us anything. Cool. Any questions? about the three things y'all are doing with the rest of your day. Please use this lab time um, to get caught up on part one if you have not uh, finished that already and to get a really, really, really good start on part two. Please do not squander this opportunity. I'm being very gracious and giving you quite a bit of lab time to do this type of stuff. So please take advantage of it and don't just, you know, do nothing. <laughs> Luigi, yes. On Clippy, I see the RESTful routing quiz, but there's also an express error handling quiz. Is that the same quiz or is there another quiz we should be doing? Um, let me double check. Can you refresh? The error handling quiz should be removed. Oh, okay. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Looks like what I have here is our RESTful routing quiz. Thank you for asking, though. Uh, cool. Any questions? Fantastic. Um, I am going to go ahead and stop sharing. I'll open some breakout rooms for you. Uh, you can feel free to work on your labs together if you'd like to do that. Um, breakout rooms are open, though. Uh, you are not obligated to stay here. You may log off if you want. Have a wonderful evening. Um, like I said, please kind of, you know, take advantage of this time that you have and uh, get make some good headway on those two labs that you have. Get all this Google stuff out of the way and take that quiz. Y'all have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thanks. Feel better, Ben. Poor Ben.